Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to be installing Windows 11, or at least trying to, on this very old HP ProLiant ML115 Generation 5. Let's see what uh, what happens. Alright, the USB stick is in. Here's a quick list of our specifications. And it should start booting from the USB pretty much immediately. We'll see if it wants to. That, that's looking good. Let's see if it will actually proceed to boot from the stick and start loading the installer. Just to reiterate, we have a quad-core Optron CPU from 2008. We have 8GB of DDR2 ECC memory. The graphics are on board. We might have to install a video card in order to proceed. And, uh, the disc we're using for today's video is the Samsung 860 EVO. I had two of them that I pulled out of a server that uh, no longer needs local storage, so we can use that as a test. I've seen systems of this vintage trying to boot Windows 10 or 11 uh, like this before. Sometimes it just takes a couple minutes for it to load. We'll, uh, just see what happens, and if nothing happens, we'll have to, uh, well, there it goes. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant, so. By the way, by default, you cannot install Windows 11 on a system like this, obviously, because, quite frankly, it's not supported. It does not support Secure Boot, it does not support UEFI. Let's see if you can find e Dutch. Time and currency format and United States International Keyboard. So in order to circumvent the TPM and secure boot requirements, you have to basically use Rufus and you can select the uh, advanced install and it will create a bootable installer for Windows 11 that does not uh, check for a TPM, which is nice. We'll go with Windows 11 Pro. Right, it's, this disk is probably still UEFI or uh, EFI formatted. We can easily convert the disk to MBR by going into the command prompt. You can get there during Windows setup by pressing Shift F10. Yep, Shift F10. And then go to the disk part, say list disk, select the disk that we want to clean, which is disk 2. We'll type in clean. And then we'll type convert MBR. Now we can close the command prompt. Press refresh. And we should be allowed to continue with our current drive. We'll create a partition. I'm nagging about it. Okay, Let's see if something didn't quite take there. Press refresh again. Interesting. Hmm. Just create a partition. For some reason, it fails to recognize it. Right, what I'm going to do is do a simple restart. That usually helps with things like this. And we'll go from there. As you can see, it is now installing. Uh, what basically happened was that... Uh, Samsung SSD, this one over here, was previously part of a RAID set, and even though we actually cleaned all the partitions off of it, it would not release that state for some reason, so I'll have to perform another complete wipe on it someday, but that 
uh, ended up being the issue. For now, we're using a different kind of SSD. I still had a uh, 128 gigabyte King spec, so we'll be using that for this uh, run here. And uh, I'll just let it uh, do its thing and uh, see if we run into any problems along the way. And there we have the Windows 11 desktop, Windows 11 Pro, and apparently TikTok, which I don't really care about, but anyway. So the install didn't take all of that long. It was about 10 minutes for the initial setup. And then the out of the box experience took another 10 minutes. We needed about five or so extra reboots before we uh, ended up at uh, the desktop here. I needed to disconnect it from the internet because it wanted to log me on with a Microsoft account, even uh, using the, I want to use this using a business account. Wouldn't accept that any, anyway. And uh, yeah, so far the operating system appears to be working. So that's pretty neat. Um, yep, addicting all that hardware just fine. Let's actually go to the device manager because I want to see if we're missing any drivers. Probably are. A CPI driver. It's not that important. It does not support our Matrox G200 graphics, I don't think. Which is not a huge surprise, but you know. There's still a couple of things that we are going to do to this system in order to make it more PC-like anyway, so I guess that's a good place to start right now. Right, we're going to shut it down, now that we know that it boots. Then we're going to take it apart, add some components to it, and uh, go from there to make this uh, more like a PC. Because the things that we are currently missing are sound. Uh, better graphics and some more modern I.O. Just some creature comforts there. So, uh, yep. And it's already turned off. Yep, there it goes. And, uh, yeah, let's take it apart. Alright, there we are. I'm going to undo one little T10 screw on the back here. Which is obviously off camera, but bear with me. That's holding in the expansion cord area. There's a couple of tabs here that you need to remove and it'll slide right out. Right, so the cards that I've selected will require the use of the PCI slot that I almost missed in the previous video on this machine. An X1 and we'll also need the X16. First card, a Sound Blaster card, the SB1070. This is uh, one of the only spare cards that I have that has modern OS support, being Windows XP, but this also has 64-bit drivers, so good enough. We'll put it in. Now 
That slot has never been used. You can tell. Second card, USB 3 card. Simple. Don't even exactly know what kind of chipset this has. Probably something like Renesas or something. We'll figure that out if Windows can't figure it out. Probably have an installer for it somewhere. I'll use this video card because it's spare. It's a Quadro NVS from NVIDIA. This is the NVS 510. I have a mini DisplayPort 2 VGA adapter so we can use our test monitor. That doesn't work, we'll have to relocate. Because I don't really have that many PCI Express video cards as spares at the moment. Because I usually only stuck up on AGP. Which is too old for this, for a change. Right. Secure the panel again. Put the T10 screw back in. Cards are in place. I don't know if that display adapter is going to work though. But I don't mean the video card, but I mean this uh, Apple Mini DisplayPort 2 VGA adapter. I'm not sure if this card does not support any form of analog output. We are boned and we'll have to relocate. But I guess we'll find out. Let's close her up. And uh, give it a whirl. Alright, it's time for a lift off. LED is still yellow. Or amber. And it's turning blue. There we go. This might actually work. That would be great. All right, we have video. So yeah, I think we can be very clear about the fact that this is not really a PC that you <laughs> should be using when you need to be very quiet about it. So this is not something that uh, some youngster should buy should they want uh, to sneakily use their PC in, uh, in the depth of night, but uh, you know. If you don't need to reboot it very often, it's pretty quiet. I guess if you're not using any mechanical hard drives, it should actually suffice to just um, use a quieter fan. From what I've found so far on this system is it doesn't seem to use major proprietary parts. So I think for once you could actually swap the fan with a regular PWM one. If just using SSDs, that's absolutely no problem at all. Right, so boot time is now significantly longer. Just be pretty quick about it, but it's probably trying to load some drivers for the new components that we've added, which makes sense. Yep, the hard drive indicator LED is going berserk, so I guess we just need to wait for a bit. And we're back at the desktop here, and it finishes booting. I think I figured out what's going wrong. Um, because it installed in very low, uh, 
resolution video mode, yeah, Nvidia MVS just wouldn't actually <laughs> accept that. And it would simply refuse to finish booting, so that's the issue we're having. Also seeing if we can at least upgrade this driver. If only I had the right driver USB. I think the particular USB that I'm looking for is grown legs, but you know. I did actually have a driver for this, but uh, I guess we can't use that right now. Which is fine. While we're there, we might as well download the latest NVIDIA driver. There we go. Go to the NVIDIA website. Go for drivers. And this is a NVS. And the website froze. Anyway, so it did not find the audio driver for the Sound Blaster, so we also need to get that driver going. So I'm going to download and install some drivers, make sure everything is up and running. And once we're booted from the NVIDIA card and have everything up and running, we can do some tests and see how Windows 11 performs on a system like this. An ML 115 G5 server turned into a regular PC. All right, it's now the next day and uh, just finished up doing some testing on the system and everything appears pretty good. So uh, yeah, this is what Task Manager looks like. As we can see, it's uh, using barely any CPU now that it has finally calmed down locking down to 1.2 to 1.4 gigahertz, which is good. Our RAM usage is very low, we're only using two gigabytes. Video card is not doing all that much. So that's just so far so good. I've disabled Windows Update for the uh, purpose of this video because it's obviously missing some updates and I don't really want it to interfere with our results here. So that's just something to note. If we go into CPU Z here, I'll zoom in so you can see what's going on. We're running an AMD Optron 1354 with a 120 watt TDP. It's not consuming anywhere near that at the moment. We have four cores, four threads. Main board is a Polite M115 G5, obviously. One very interesting thing to note is right here, the Enforce 570 SLI Southbridge. You know, if only I had a couple of NVIDIA cards that actually supported SLI, I would actually try to uh, run them uh, that way. Because as far as I know, the SLI certification only requires you to have at least two X8 slots. And uh, the SLI certification. And this board actually fits that bill, but I just don't have two identical NVIDIA cards, so I, I can't test it. But that would be cool, a server with SLI. Uh, that would be something uh, maybe for the future, if I can ever find some cheap SLI-capable cards that I can put in here and that will actually run off of this... Uh, 365 watt PSU. I guess I could swap out the PSU for something else anyway, but you know, got a RAM here, 8 gigabytes, two, uh, two, gig two gigabytes each, four sticks, and the NVS with the NVIDIA Kepler GPU on it. So, a contemporary for this CPU would be a Core 2 Duo. The particular one that I've selected here is the E8500, which is actually a little bit faster in terms of uh, single core anyway, because it's uh, much faster clock. And uh, this is the era where AMD started to slip behind Intel, so I should expect with its only measly 2.2 gigahertz, it should perform quite a bit uh, slower or worse, I guess, than the Core 2 Duo would in single core. In terms of multi-thread, I would expect them to be pretty close. But uh, I guess we'll find out. Let's bench the CPU. Not even multi-thread, it's nowhere near. Can't say I'm that surprised, but you know, it's a bit of a downer, I guess. Perhaps there's something in this server that's holding it back. I'm not sure. 
wasn't really running full speed, uh, I guess, but yeah. What we could do is go into the control panel, disable all the energy saving options and go straight for high performance. Not that this, this has any high performance, but let's see if that makes a difference. Well, it's not going to make us break four on points, is it? Doesn't really seem to make a difference, so I guess that's out of the window. Okay, so the CPU scaling is uh, working properly. We'll re-enable our power saving features because it's still a bit of a hot chip. In fact, how hot it is, we can actually see using hardware monitor here. It's already cooled down now, but you know, let's zoom out a little bit. Get this into the frame. I've actually checked on the specs on cooling and whatever. And it's, oh, it's the package temp is 29 degrees. Okay. So I guess this is more than capable of uh, dissipating its own heat. Maybe the gross cost running around 40 degrees. I've never actually repasted it, so I have no idea how old the paste is in there. I'm guessing ancient. But anyway, let's go and see if we can consume some media on the interwebs by using the YouTube. It seems to load just fine. I guess this is uh, as good as anything. It's playing, but not actually seeing any video. It hasn't actually finished loading yet, so let's give it a fair chance. It's set to 1080p60. Let's go full screen, see if it wants to play. I think this video is using a codec that really de really doesn't agree with. Let's drop it to 72060. Even that's a little bit laggy, I'll admit. Well, let's look in Task Manager, see what it's doing. It seems to have some pretty high CPU usage regardless, which is weird. I wasn't doing that yesterday. <laughs> it's camera shy. That's what it is. Right, so let's also disable the annotations because it's also going to make it run slower. We'll jump ahead to this part here. It's also been buffered, so let's see what it does. Yeah, that's much better. Now that the CPU had some time to calm down, that's playing nicely. Now drop frames. Fourteen forty P60. Let it buffer for a little bit. That's what they call a hard nope. Drop it back down to 1080. Buffer for a few seconds. Yep, and that's playing fine. Right, so we'll do uh, 1080p60 YouTube playback just fine, apparently. So that's always nice to know. So media playback is good overall. Uh, usage of the operating system is honestly good enough. Here we have LibreOffice loading. I always forget you shouldn't run the primary loader because it's very, very slow. Let's open up a presentation template here. There we go. That's pretty nice. So this is also fine for doing some office work and all that. So basically, turn in, turning a server into a PC is not all that difficult, as it turns out. And... Uh, with some sm slight modifications, you can even make it run Windows 11, the very latest version of Windows available at the time of making this video. And the overall experience 
honestly is pretty good for a system that's 13 years old. I think this is a win. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.